it's really easy to oversimplify things that are a little bit complex and give people the wrong idea when it comes to how their body uses fuel for energy. Allow me to explain. But first, before I explain, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time we release a new video. My name is Dr. Steven Janopoulos, affectionately known as Dr. Steven G on social media. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In the world of nutrition, there's a lot of information out there that's being thrown around a little bit too loosely. So I wanna define some terms here and kind of simplify things for you so you can make better decisions for yourself. Now, there are three major macronutrients, right? Protein, carbohydrates, and fat, and they can all be used for energy. Now, there's protein, carbohydrates, and fat that are a part of our bodies, and there are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats that are in our diet, right? So when we use protein for energy, it doesn't mean we're breaking down our muscle tissue to burn as fuel. It could be that we're breaking down the steak we just ate to burn as fuel. So this seems kind of simple and may not understand why it's completely necessary to bring up, but I think it's necessary because there's this belief that if we don't eat immediately before a workout, that there'll be no fuel available for us to use other than to catabolize our own body tissue. And that's just ridiculous. So how does the body use fuel? Well, let's first discuss where we store our fuel and how much of it we can store. So let's just take the average 70 kilogram male and say this person is normal weight, normal muscle, not obese, not suffering from any metabolic disease. This person can carry about 500 grams of glucose, the storage form called glycogen. What is glycogen? Take a sugar molecule called glucose, a sugar molecule called glucose, and you string them together. And that is the storage form of glucose called glycogen. And what binds that all together is water. For every gram of glucose, you need three grams of water to hold it together. That's very, very important to understand in just a moment, you'll see. So we can hold about 400 calories in our liver. We can hold about 1600 calories in our muscles. And and that gives us about a day's supply of fuel if all we were to burn is the glycogen or the glucose for energy. 2,000 calories is typically a one-day supply. Now that same 70 kilogram male can have about 6,000 grams of protein in the form of muscle. If that muscle were used for energy, you would have about a 12-day supply before you ran out of muscle to burn. Now that same 70 kilogram male can have about 12,000 grams of body fat. Now this isn't somebody who's obese. This is somebody who's normal weight and normal muscle. So let's extrapolate that into calories. That's about 120,000 calories that you could carry and at 2,000 calories a day, that's about a 60 day supply. So why do we so efficiently store about 60 days worth of energy in the form of fat and we only store one day of energy in the form of glycogen? And the answer is water. You see, fat avoids water. Fat, in order to be stored, doesn't require any water. Whereas glucose, glycogen, requires three times as much water as it does the molecule that gives us the energy, the glucose. So just imagine instead of 120,000 calories worth of fat for energy, we had 120,000 calories worth of sugar or glucose stored. Well then we would need about 90,000 grams of water to carry that around. So the average 70 kilogram person would have to carry 90 kilograms of water in order to have that energy. So that just doesn't work. So the amount of water required to have this rocket fuel we call glucose or glycogen is just not going to be something that we can do in any capacity more than the 2,000 calories we've already discussed. Now we also have to recognize that protein, although it can be used as a fuel, for sure, your own bodily proteins, enzymes, and muscle tissue are the last thing your body wants to use for energy. It's going to go through all of the glucose, all the glycogen, all of the body fat way before it ever touches. As a matter of fact, when you're fasting and your body goes into ketosis, it actually initiates a mechanism to protect your muscle, to prevent you from atrophy, from losing that muscle. People who are in ketosis preserve muscle in favor of burning fat. And that's why ketogenic diets are so desirable. Now, we can use protein for energy, but 
again, not our own bodily proteins. We need the protein in our body. We need enzymes in order for our body to function. We need muscle tissue in order to hunt and gather our next meal. So catabolizing that, and you may have heard me use this analogy before, would be like throwing your like $10,000 dining room set into your fireplace just to heat the house. That makes no sense to take the structure of the things in your home and use it for energy. It makes more sense to go outside and get some firewood and bring it into the house to burn for energy. But that's not to say that you wouldn't get energy from protein if you didn't eat carbohydrates. You see, if you did not eat any carbohydrates, let's just say you spent the last six weeks on the carnivore diet, not eating any carbohydrates, would you be lacking glycogen? No, you would have glycogen. Where would you get it from? You would get it from breaking down your dietary protein and your dietary fat. And when you break those things down, you can manufacture glycogen to store in your muscles and your liver. The more time you spend on a carnivore or a ketogenic diet, the more efficiently you can do this. If you're somebody who consumes 50 to 60% of their calories from carbohydrates, well then your ability to break down dietary protein and efficiently use it as a fuel that's glucose or glycogen is not gonna be very good, but if you give it time, it will get far more efficient. Your body will adapt to the fuel that you provide it. Even when you break down fat, there are triglycerides. A triglyceride is a three carbon backbone with three chains of fatty acids. The three chains of fatty acids are cleaved off. Those free fatty acids are used to make ketones to be used for energy. And the three carbon glycerol backbone can be used to manufacture glucose for gluconeogenesis to use as glycogen storage. And the same holds true for dietary protein. You can break down those amino acids from the protein and convert them into glucose and glycogen to be stored later for energy. And it does make sense because dietary protein, steak, is far more expensive than potatoes or rice. So yes, it's more expensive to get your glycogen or glucose from protein and you would have to consume a whole lot more protein in order to maintain your glucose or glycogen needs in addition to your protein needs in order to build muscle. Now the last point I'd like to make is this idea that food is just used for energy. It's also used for structure and every protein has a half-life. And what that means is every protein, depending on its size, will have to be replaced. Now, the large largest proteins in your body, let's just say your muscle tissue, that has a half-life of about eight days, eight to 10 days. You see, if our muscles get smaller, it's not because we burned that muscle off as energy because we didn't have any carbohydrates to eat. When our muscles get smaller, it's usually due to disuse atrophy, kind of like when you break your arm. When you break your arm and you put it into a cast and you immobilize the joint for three weeks and you take the cast off after the bone is healed, well, that arm is gonna be half the size of the other arm because of disuse, the muscle atrophy. You didn't just burn it because you weren't eating carbohydrates and therefore you had to waste that muscle down in order to make energy. That's not the way it works. The way it works is you replace protein with dietary protein. You break down your dietary protein into amino acids, reassemble those amino acids to become enzymes or muscle tissue or bone collagen or whatever the protein is in your body in order to manufacture that structure that you need. So food can be energy and food can be structure. Most of the structure in our body is in the form of protein. A lot of the structure in our body is in the form of fat right? Think about your cell membranes and all of the things that you need fat for, but very little of our structure is going to be glucose or glycogen or carbohydrates. We can safely assume that all of the carbohydrates we eat is pure energy. We can also safely assume that most of the fat we eat can be used as pure energy, but some of it can be used as structure. And then we can say most of the protein we consume is going to be used for structure. And then it can, dietary protein can be used for energy if we need it, but the preference is to use it for structure. Now, your own bodily proteins are going to be the last thing you use for energy. And the first thing you use for energy is your body fat. When you're doing routine activities of daily living, walking the dog, cleaning the kitchen, getting dressed, that's almost predominantly body fat that's being used. Only when you cross a certain threshold of intensity will you then start burning the very valuable rocket fuel that we call glucose or glycogen. Hopefully that'll help you in planning your own energy balance. Just know that your dietary sources are going to be used by your body in the most efficient way for your body to preserve its own survival and longevity. And remember, your body doesn't really know if it's gonna be fed the next day. So your body will always defer to being more efficient.